You are listening to the We Are Cousins podcast, a podcast that focuses in South Texas and Northeastern Mexico genealogy. This is session number 28, and today I'm very happy to have Welster Alvarado with us. We will be discussing Monterrey and its genealogical resources to help in your research. But before we get into the our conversation, I just want to thank Las Vías del Norte for sponsoring this podcast. Las Vías del Norte provides you with the same benefits that a brick-and-mortar genealogical society does, but on a digital platform. Please uh, make sure and visit them at lasviasdelnorte.com. Once again, thank you. And here's our conversation with Welster. Okay, well, uh, I guess let's get started. Let's get started. Hello, everyone. Today we have uh, Welster Alvarado. He's no, no stranger to our uh, podcast. And... Our last podcast, he was our last guest, and oh, that wow. was that was years ago. Yeah. Um, and I know over a year ago, I think we tried to record one, and somehow on my end, it didn't record. So I just saw that it's appropriate to get uh, Wellister again uh, with us to hopefully relaunch the podcast. That's if I could uh, figure out how to do it uh, all over again. Uh, if not, we just post it on uh, YouTube. We are recording video, so if you're listening to the audio, that's okay. It's totally fine. But uh, if you want to check it out on YouTube, it's hopefully it's going to be there if I remember how to do everything. <laughs> and to be honest with you, we have no topic today. So what I want to talk to with Wellester about, uh, it's about Monterrey and why Monterrey is so important in our family history and genealogy. And hopefully maybe we'll talk about uh, some resources that you could tap in online and offline because not everything's online for Monterrey. And hopefully, not hopefully, we'll, I will be talking about why Monterrey is so important to all of us. If you're listening to this podcast, I know you have ancestors from Northeastern Mexico, which is South Texas, Coahuila, Nuevo Leon, or in Tamaulipas. I live in South Texas. I was raised in North uh, Eastern Mexico in Tamaulipas. I know Wellester was born California, I believe, and he's now residing in Monterrey. Beautiful well, Wellester, downtown Monterey. <laughs> well, Wellester, good morning again. And uh, coffee is good right now because it's too early yes. in the morning. Greetings and salutations. I come in peace. And for those of you not uh, watching the video, we just uh, took a sip of coffee. Hopefully we get to do this next month again, me and Wellester, and um, do it in the afternoon so we could have uh, some wine or something. Hey, there you go. <laughs> right? Uh, that way, um, como dicen, nos suelta la lengua. <laughs> Sounds good um, to me. So, Wellister, uh, could you do a small introduction for those of our listeners that haven't tuned in to the podcast in years? Sure. Uh, my name is Wellister Gerard Alvarado Carrillo. And uh, 20 years ago, I took a sabbatical and wanted to do my family tree. So I thought I'd take one year and come to beautiful Monterey and start doing my research and my family tree on, on my dad's side. And then I thought I would do it really, really fast in one year and from there jump to my mom's, which is uh, in Chihuahua, uh, in Juarez. And uh, 20 years later, <laughs> I'm still here in Monterey and I haven't completed my, uh, <laughs> my genealogy uh, tree. It's a lot harder than people think. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a madness that uh, sooner or later when you, when you join this, this group, this elite group of genealogists worldwide, um, you you get a it's a it's like a fever. You get into it a little bit, and you kind of decide, ah, this is okay. And then little by little, it starts taking over your life. <laughs> and uh, like I said, 20 years later, I never ever ever in my life. I lived in Marina del Rey in California. I used to I used to walk amongst the the, the, the yachts and the boats and have breakfast right at the seaside every morning uh, to come to a desert-like uh, city. Uh, we have lakes and, and rivers, but uh, 
nothing like the like the ocean you know it, it's just uh, fantastic but here i am uh 20 years later uh this has become my home uh, and it's just like moises was commenting it's the the cradle of all of us uh where our ancestors have have come from and we're unique in this area com uh, compared to the rest of mexico in taumalipas coahuila nueva leon and it even kind of uh, filters down to San Luis Potosí, to Zacatecas, Aguas Caliente, Calientes. Uh, but more, more here in, in Nuevo León, it, our ancestors were here, and this is where we all come from. I mean, it, it's just an incredible, incredible uh, plethora of information, a wealth of information for us to, to find. And it's true, we can't find everything on the internet that pertains to Monterey. But thank God, I mean, we have Moises and we have people like him that are dedicated into helping us do that, that trampoline jump to get into something of, of, of uh, you know, you, you're like searching in the dark and all of a sudden there's a, there's a, a beam of light at the end and it's Moises. And, and I, I can't leave out Crisp and Rendon. I mean, these two guys are like uh, superheroes. So. Uh, before I say anything else, thank you kindly to you two guys because you're 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 you're, you're such a, a help and an inspiration. I lost all my information several years back, and and I was the the word that they use here in Mexico is aguitado. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was so bummed. Uh, it was it was a freak of nature. The the kid that came in to to clean my my computer, my laptop, he wiped everything out. And then I thought, ah, it's okay, no big deal. I have three memory sticks that I can rely on. And my beautiful wife uh, is, uh, she's a teacher to the teachers and, 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 and um, she took one of my memory sticks to work and it's on a government uh, internet line and they have no, no antivirus uh, in, in that system. So my first memory stick, zip, it was gone. She used a second one because she couldn't take any information out of the first one. And that one also went. The third one, when she came to the house, she put the infected one into my laptop and then she tried to download uh, the good one. Freak of nature, my three backups, I never printed, which now I do. Now I print everything. I never printed anything. so. I was, I was all bummed out and, and I didn't do any research. I, I thought all oh, seven years of work that I was doing, just like that, it was gone. And, uh, but then again, like I said, there are, I, I'm, in the, I'm in the cradle of our, of our ancestors. I started to go and talk to people little by little, and I mean little by little is years. <laughs> it wasn't days and weeks and months, it was years, little by little, because I, I was really bummed. I actually came back to having roughly about 800, 900 people in my, in my tree um, after seven years of having more, but uh, I'm, still, I'm still climbing and, uh, and I'm not as, as, as bummed as I was before. Um, it helps a lot to be in groups and it helps a lot to have a friend like uh, Moises and Crispin that uh, throw you big bones to, to gnaw on because good information, just verify it, that's all. And, you know, um, later on, I want to talk about Crispin and what he's doing right now. But before that, um, don't forget to back up your data. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Learn from Wellister. And um, what, I, what I do, I back up my data, and I have this service called Dropbox. It's free for two gigabytes. And believe me, that's more than enough space for your family tree. And I use a program, right? The program puts it into a backup file and all I do, I upload it to Dropbox and it's there. Um, and hopefully like my house never gets destroyed, but if it does, I know I have that on uh, the backup and it's in the cloud. Oh, okay. That sounds good. That's good news. And uh, before we talk about Crispin, because I really want to talk about him. Um, for those of you that are new to genealogy, and have traced your roots. Uh, well, if you're from Coahuila, Nuevo Leon, Tamaulipas, South Texas, especially from Tamaulipas and South Texas, Monterrey is very important because it was founded in uh, 1596. And it was its third founding, but it was a successful founding. 
uh, prior to that, uh, Luis de Carvajal uh, tried to found the city here. And then um, uh, what's his name? The other ancestor, Alberto El Canto. And also those uh, attempts failed. Then Diego de Montemayor came back and actually was a successful settlement. And something that's incredible, he named it Ciudad Metropolitana de Monterrey. I don't know what he saw, but he had the vision that eventually yeah, was exactly. going to become a city. Exactly, he had a vision of a huge city from the start, from the get-go. And it became a city. And then over, what, 100 years, over 150 years later, we have uh, this uh, guy <laughs> called uh, Jose Escandon. And he petitioned the government, the Spanish government, to be able to found uh, s towns and cities in what is now Tamaulipas. So he got the green light. And as well as there's a friend used to say, Don uh, Israel Cavazos Garza, Nuevo León se desplomó. Basically, that Nuevo León stay without people because he used to say that Jose Escandón settled all uh, Tamaulipas with people from uh, from Nuevo Leon, and a and, lot of know, them just, came from Monterrey. Just a, t just a tidbit: um, Cadreta uh, uh, Jimenez is is one is like a major city here, but uh, Monterrey is the biggest one. Tampico, Coahuil, uh, Tamaulipas, was in the county of Cadreta because you mentioned something really important when when it when it became a state. Everybody, a hundred families from Cadareta went to Tampico, and f hundreds of families from different different uh, uh, cities or pueblos in those days went to to populate Tamaulipas, and so the county of Cadareta was from here all the way to the ocean. It was incredible. Same people from uh, Santiago, Cadareta, Allende, uh, Monte Morelos. They're all the same people. Uh, they all come from the same people. So that unique thing that you were talking about uh, in the Northeast, that uh, when somebody says, primo, it's a, it's a fact. <laughs> it really is. We are all distant cousins, every one of us. It is a fact. And uh, for my research, the reason that I named my website, We Are Cousins, was because from personal research, I, when I started, I was like, hey, let me do your genealogy. Let me do your genealogy. And I did it for a lot of people. <laughs> And what I soon, uh, what I found very fast was that we were related between five and eight generations back. So I just thought that was amazing. And that's the reason that I actually named it We Are Cousins. And something that's very important, uh, my focus is Las Vías del Norte, which is Laredo, uh, Mier, Camargo, um, and Reynosa. I'm pretty sure I missed one there. But the 1757 census of those towns, they actually mention where the families came from. And they came from Cerralbo, Montemorelos, uh, Cadereyta, just like Wellester was saying. So if you want to find out where, if you come from a family that settled one, in one of Las Vías del Norte, make sure and look at that census because it'll tell you where they came from. And if you have a roadblock that you can go further from the 1750s, That'll tell you which town to go look for information on or your ancestors at. You know what, what's interesting too is that uh, for being in a, in a time when there were no engines, no, no automobiles, uh, no airplanes, no helicopters, no, you know, it was a horse or a horse and buggy or a horse and wagon. Those people moved around so much. They used to, I mean, the people from Santiago used to go to uh, Laredo as if it was just a daily routine thing to do. My great, great grandfather went there and, and worked and uh, would go back to Santiago and get married and then go back and work in Laredo and then go back and forth, back and forth. And it was just a common, easy thing to do. And it happened a lot. It was frequent. And that's a very, that's a very good point because if you're searching, let's say familysearch.org, and you're looking for a certain ancestor that was from Ciudad Mier in the 1750s, 1760s, and then you find children being baptized in Monterrey just a few years later, mm -hmm. is what? Those are your ancestors because they used to move around a lot. 
And I've been finding, especially Las Villas del Norte, when they were founded, I don't know, if maybe there were no midwives that specialized that, but you see families going back to Cerralbo and um, I guess having their children there and baptizing them there. And same thing, you see people from Reynosa going back to uh, Montemorelos and having children over there and then coming back. Yes. So, <laughs> um, and bringing back Don Israel Cavazos Garza, he used to say, eran unos andariegos. Basically, <laughs> they were all over the place. You know, the spirit of the people from Monterey uh, and Tamaulipas, because it was all one, one area, uh, and Coahuila, they were, they were uh, aventureros, like they said in, in Spanish. They were, they were like th that, that, that mentality of, of seeking and looking for more. They were workaholics. Uh, they were always doing something, uh, if it was farming, mining, uh, agriculture, um, with uh, the cattle and the sheep, and the, I mean the, the goat, not the sheep. They were always, always doing something, uh, building, and it's, it's different than the rest of Mexico, because the rest of Mexico, they did one or two things, but not everything all at once, like, like the people our ancestors did here. Uh, it helps a little bit to have that influence of the, uh, the Ladino, the, the Sephardis, the, the Jewish, uh, uh, Spanish Jews coming from, from Spain and coming from their clandestine, you know, they, they were like hiding their, their, their Jewish uh, blood and uh, the Inquisition wasn't nice to anybody here. It, it, hundreds of years later, it still, it, they still got caught up to them and they still got killed, unfortunately. Yes, and uh, we have uh, Francisco Baez de Benavides, who actually got um, <laughs> um, his citizenship. Not, no, not persecuted. Francisco Baez de Benavides, he lived in the 1600s in Monterrey. Oh. <laughs> but the Inquisition tried to get him because uh, a priest <clears throat> accused him that he tried to kill him. Oh, God. Um, from what I've read, Francisco Baez de Benavides had lent money to the priest, and the priest didn't want to pay back. I want to pay him back. So then um, his good compadre, Bernabé Las Casas, was the judge. So oh, he sided yeah, with yes. uh, Francisco Valles Benavides and told the priest that, hey, you have to pay him. Wow. So, mm. and eventually, sad. eventually sad the, well, sad times, but eventually the Inquisition didn't, was not as strong in that area as it was in other parts of Mexico because eventually the priests and the people in charge of the Inquisition were, descendants of the original settlers right and the priests in those days the, the priests were uh you know i don't want to speak ill of the uh, catholic religion but uh in those days the priests owned land they had wives that they didn't uh publicize uh they had children they had a lot of property and they bought and sold and swindled and uh, uh finagled their way into riches uh, and sorry to say, in, here in Monterey, a few years back, a really, I won't mention his name, but a, a real uh, popular and well thought of, until he passed away, priest had basically, uh, for the lack of a better word right now, because it's still morning, I haven't finished my coffee, he stole a lot of, a lot of relics uh, from the church here in, in Monterey. When he passed away, they found books, uh, jewelry, uh, crosses encrusted with, uh, you know, precious gems and stuff like that, and a whole bunch of stuff. And it broke the heart of a lot of people uh, because he was well liked and well known and respected for his knowledge and, and what he used to do. But uh, he had that little fever <laughs> that uh, he had to have these certain items that. Uh, were you know three four hundred years old and uh, all to him all to himself in his in his little house. Anyway, so and and you know from from history, well, if you anybody that studies history will know that the Catholic Church had a hand in everything, and that's absolutely. why in the 1860s Benito Juarez took away all the property from the church because he saw how influential they were and how they would. Um, manipulate politics in Mexico. They treated people not that nice. Uh, that's why those Cristeros, 
there was a, there was so much animosity uh, towards the the Catholic religion at that time. Um, you know, people were were were, were lashing out uh, after years and years of domination and uh, being taken advantage of, humiliated, and so forth, and 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 a lot of times treated physically really bad. Yes, and the the war for the Cristeros was because of after the Mexican Revolution, the Mexican government put its weight against the church yeah. to try and really keep them out of uh, politics because they, I guess they didn't they, learn with Benito Juarez and then oh, they messed up, uh, they had a hand in the revolution. They continued with an iron fist, exactly. Yeah, and eventually I guess things settled down by the 1940s. But I know during that time, 1920s, 1940s, a lot of priests were uh, holding mass in private ranches at least that's in uh, in northern Nuevo Leon, the Los Aldamas area. That's what the priests would do: uh, go to different families each weekend and hold mass there. Right. Um, and now I want to move back to Monterrey. Yes. Um, and you talked about Crispin Rendon, and there's very few people in the genealogy world that I look up to, and Crispin is one of them. I agree, one hundred percent. His information is very accurate. And now his book series, what he does, he gets a microfilm, a marriage microfilm, and goes marriage by marriage and tries to find two generations of descendants for each couple. God then what bless. he does, he compiles them into 300 to 600 page uh, ebooks. And he publishes them out there for free for anybody that uh, wants to download them. And that in itself is unbelievable, really. It, it's just it's it's a wealth of information that he provides for us and basically and the way i see it he has changed the face of genealogy for anybody that has roots in nuevo leon um and you know what, what one of the things that he says that i really really like and, and you and i agree on this is he tells you here's here's a a, a guide but don't take it at face value and think that it's the it's the truth of all truths, because even back then they made mistakes when they were uh, doing the 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 information. Basically, you know, some of the people said uh, they put down Spanish, but you know, I know that he was a mulatto, or I know that he was a you know a, a mestizo. Um, so you have to verify what he's given you, because it, it's out there, but you still have to get a documentation. Con papelito es más bonito, they say here. Um, so, so yeah, it, it's 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 a good ninety nine percent excellent start for anybody. You you know, and it's true. Uh, he has the family. I'm sorry, the yeah, the families of Serralvo, the families of Monterrey, which is the latest one that he's doing. And he starts with the first marriage record that he found and trying to find two generations of descendants. And puts them in two ebooks. That information there, it's very accurate. But with any type of work, there's finger errors, uh, may have the wrong date, but he includes an image number. So if something looks funny, just go and, uh, and at the beginning and the introduction, he tells you how to go to family search and look for that particular record based on the image that he, image number that he provides you. Now, if he did a family tree, uh, family book for you, Basically, you send him your family tree, what you have, and he'll link you up to his database, and then he'll send you a ebook. Now, that ebook, he tells people like this is just a tool. Like I tell everybody with my books, they're just right. tools. They're not set in stone. The information may be wrong because everybody has wrong information. And you, as a genealogist, or us as genealogists, to strive to have as accurate information as we can. Document, document, document. And and document uh, your sources, because guess what? You may have conflicting information. You may have 10 documents saying one thing, but then you may find one that is wrong. Well, guess what? If you find that one that is wrong first, you're gonna have the wrong information. That's why you always have to document and then base it, hey, in that case, what I do is I go with the 10 documents that have the same information but I also make a note, hey, there's this other document that has this other thing. Uh, especially with the marriage dispensations for Monterrey, some of them, 
uh, have the same abuelitos, but then you find one that's totally wrong. Well, I go with the one that has most uh, citations that have the same information. <clears throat> Just right. make a note to the other one. Um, but so far, let me open the, the website and see if I could provide people or our listeners with the address for Crispin's uh, website. Okay, the address is kind of uh, long, but um, something that you all could do, just go to weirdcousins.info and then on the search bar of the homepage, you could just type in Crispin Rendon. In the next few weeks, I'll probably be sharing, or I will be sharing his uh, new books. Um, but the address is geneticprimos.wordpress.com uh, forward slash Crispin dash Rendon forward slash. So as you can see, it's a, it's a mouthful. But so far for Monterrey, he has released, he has released seven eBooks from 1667 to 1751. Wow. And I know he wanted to release all the way up to the independence, Mexico's independence, which is 1720s. Wow. But this, uh, these ebooks are very valuable and I highly recommend everybody go download them because you never know if uh, this website stops working, that's it. You're going to be out of luck. Very true. <clears throat> You know, Mikey Gonzalez from Cerralvo? Oh, yes. Uh, he's been, no, I don't know why, but he's been, for the longest time, he's been having trouble with uh, downloading all the information that, that Crispin has done from Cerralvo. And just last week, uh, I downloaded everything uh, for him and I sent it to him. And he finally, he's, he was so happy. I sent him everything other, apart from Cerralvo. I sent him everything that I had up to that point uh, from, from Crispin. So he's over the moon right now. <laughs> I, I wonder if that was uh, his computer that was messing up or something. I don't know, and I didn't ask him. But uh, uh, And if you get a chance, uh, send him a little, little uh, get well note. He, was, he had a, a bad spell, and he's, and he's recovering right now. Um, I'm sure he'd love to hear a couple words from you. Yeah, I'll send him a message uh, once yeah. we get off. Uh, but for those of you that don't know, uh, Miguel Miguel Angel Gonzalez. No, I'm sorry. I think it's just Miguel uh, Gonzalez. Um, he goes, Martinez. Gonzalez Martinez. Gonzalez Martinez. He goes by the nickname uh, El Mike de Cerralbo. And he's or, very, or, Mikey. or Mikey. Or Mikey. And he's very knowledgeable when it comes to the Cerralbo area and actually the Gonzalez. And we do have a presentation on Las Vías del Norte that he did for us a couple of years ago where he talks about the history of the Gonzalez Hidalgo from uh, Cerralbo. I love his work, man. He, he is so eloquent in his, in his, uh, in his speeches and, and the things that he says. And the energy that he has, he's, yes. he's very loud. And, he's and contagious, I, he's contagious. He's, his grin, his teeth, everything when he smiles. <laughs> I know, he's a very good presenter. And um, I don't know if you know this, uh, I'm pretty sure you were aware. A couple of years ago, the Archivos de Monterrey were online. But since yes. they've now taken them down... Uh, offline you know i don't know why but uh i i, I got to know more people there uh and got, you, you refreshed my memory because i forgot all about it uh i'm gonna i'm gonna ask them um i'm gonna check it out first and then i'm gonna i'm gonna call up uh juanita and ask her uh what what their plans are to, for that because i don't know if they were going to revamp it and going to digitize it and or or, or I don't know what they were going to do, but maybe they had some some plan. Uh, right now, no one's at the uh, at the in the Palacio Viejo, where the, where their place was. But uh, uh, let me look into it, and, I, and I'll get back to you so you can relay to your to your uh, your line. Yeah, I know. Several years ago, they were available. I was able to get the what was it called the um, 
the will of uh, Juan Bautista Chapa. Ah. But now you click on the link and it goes to and gives you Archivo Historico dot Monterrey dot GovMex connection field and gives me like an error code. But uh, and last year when I went to Monterrey and I totally missed you, I don't know if you remember. Yes. Ah. <laughs> um, we, me and my friend tried to go to the Archivo Historico, but they were renovating it. So we're like, man. But then from what, there what? we, you know, and from there we just walked across the plaza and we went to the cathedral, the church. Yes. And it's just amazing. It's an amazing feeling that you get when you walk that plaza in that area, because that's uh, where you know that the. The original your town. Walked, your, your, your ancestors walked in there. They sat in there. They did. They, they, they blessed themselves with the holy water. Where you, I don't know if you dipped your finger in there or not, but I mean, it, it's, it's so much history there and so much energy from our, our past uh, ancestors. You know, and they saw that building, I guess, the way I was seeing it. And from the inside, it's, it was just um, it's a nice feeling. Yes, and it's it is. something I recommend to everybody do. Go visit Monterrey, check out the Catedral, the Archivo, just the buildings. I got to tell you something, Moises, that I still feel that way. Um, yes, uh, we get emotional. I got emotional when I was there. And something that impressed me a lot was that the Palacio Municipal, not the new one, the, the old one for the not municipal, the state capital, the old building. Right. Um, you could just walk right in and browse through all the rooms if you want to. Did and you happen it, to see the floor? Was it still open? Yes, it was open. And you can uh, see what they built on top of, of what was underneath. Actually, I, actually, I don't know what you're talking about because when I went there, it looked like a big... Um, uh, ¿cómo se diré? Un patio, but then yes. they had something with lonas because they were going to have an event. Oh, too bad because on, on that floor in the patio, they put uh, like two inch thick acrylic of, of the floor of the rooms below. Uh, they built that building on top of the old original, original building. Uh, um, so they So they made it so that you could see you know, look down and on the floor and you could see the rooms below. Uh, no one can go in there, but you can see them. And unfortunately, because of those tents, they covered it. Wow. No, I didn't see that, but that would be amazing to see it. And, you know, it reminded me of the Texas Capitol. You could just walk in there and browse it. And, you know, it just gives you the feeling that like Nuevo Leon is actually governed by the people like just like in Texas, you get that same feeling. We're like, wow, this is incredible. You could just walk right in. Of course, they have security. They have police officers, armed officers, uh, I guess, to keep the peace and protect the place. Yeah, vandals and theft. Yeah, but it, it, just that feeling, it was amazed. Uh, I was actually amazed uh, that you could do that. Then we went to the, the, the building, El Congreso del Estado, and that one oh, actually yes. was closed. Uh, but that's a more modern building. I don't know if it was because, and you know, we actually went when they were giving out the school supplies. Oh, okay. In the plaza, I was like, what is this? And we're, we actually even got in line. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't know what it was. Because oh. we we're trying to cross the placita to go to the, the Palacio del Estado. Um, and then finally we made our way through there. But, but yeah, just by any chance, did you try to go see the monjas, the nuns? Was that the restaurant or real no, nuns? No, 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 no. Ah, the restaurant. No, no. This is um, th um, this is a place on on Washington, and close to Doctor Cos. It's um, it's it's the archives of of the cathedral. Oh wow! No, we didn't try to go. Uh, you could have, well, and the next time that you guys come uh, and, and we do connect, I'll take you there because there, there you have uh, Margarita and, and, uh, and Chayo, who are nuns, who are members of the Sociedad de Genealogía de Nuevo León and, and, have, and were like basically the founding, part of the founding members of the of this, uh, society more than 20 odd years ago. 
uh, 24, 25 years ago. And there they can help you uh, search and they'll print uh, information from the documents or from the archive, excuse me, archives for you. Um, they charge 50 pesos and it goes to doing that service uh, for, for anyone who wants to go in there. And they're very strict, just like all of the nuns in Catholic religion. Man, you can't speak out loud. You can't use uh, fingers and touch the books, you know, uh, because of the acidity. And you have to use plastic gloves and so forth, uh, like latex gloves. Uh, but it's a nice place to visit. And once you make that contact with them, you've got a lifelong friend that uh, will help you in your search for your, your family tree. Wow, that's amazing. I didn't know about that. I I'll knew send that, you more information a little later. Yeah, that would be great. I knew they had uh, archives, but I didn't know the where they were located. It was It's like roughly five, six blocks from the cathedral. Really? Wow. Um, I did see behind the cathedral, if you go through some of those streets, the house Barrio Antiguo. Yes, the Joaquin Arredondo. And in Texas, he's regarded as the butcher. Oh. <laughs> be because uh, they consider him to be ruthless. He wouldn't take any prisoners. Wow. During the, the well, while Texas was getting its independence. He must have been a good friend of Pedro de Alvarado. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's his nickname, the butcher. Wow. That's something uh, I didn't know. Thanks for that information. I'm going to look into it. And... I think he never lost a battle tampoco. Wow. But yeah, uh, Joaquin Arredondo, and I wish I could have gone inside the house, but uh, we were not able to. We we were able to go to inside other, there were some restaurants in some of those old buildings. So we got right. to go inside and see the architecture. And I'm assuming most of them have like a little patio inside. The ones yes, that we got do. in, we went in, it's the rooms, the, the house, right? The entrance. And each one had a little patio. And usually this restaurant, that's where they put the tables for people to right. eat. You know, what's interesting. It's the Barrio Antiguo. And uh, some of the houses maintain their, form, their, their format completely. So you can go and see the, the square inside the, the, the patio. And then some of them, they cut them in half and they made them two houses instead of one. And the walls are like 24 inches thick blocks of, of siller, uh, sillar. Uh, which is a, a, a sandstone block that they use uh, with nine foot high ceilings inside the houses to maintain the coolness and, and, the, and the heat. You know, and my friend, some of the houses are for sale. So he got some numbers and he's like, man, I'm going to buy a house. And I told him, well, if you buy it, lend it to me. <laughs> so I could go over. <laughs> how much, how much did, 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 did he say? I don't know. Um, I need to talk to him and see if he even called. But um <laughs> It would be interesting. I would totally love to buy one of those houses. I would love to also. Um, and just to be there in the center, basically it's the center of Monterrey. It is. Um, that's, that, that's downtown. <laughs> and That would be great. That would be great. And, you know, I think that's it for resources about Monterrey. Um, uh, for those of you that haven't visited my website, info, go there. Search for ancestors. I have over a thousand three hundred posts, and I post about my ancestors that were born in Monterrey, uh, actually baptized in Monterrey, died in Monterrey, or got married in Monterrey. And also, we, I say we because it's we Las Vías del Norte. Las Vías del Norte is hosting or has created a Facebook page for Monterrey. It's a, it's called the uh, Monterrey. Monterrey. Oh, hold on, let me search for it because I don't I talk really about don't it something else and it'll come back to you. <laughs> it's actually, a good face it's a good Facebook uh, page. I, I, I frequent it a lot. Okay, it's called Monterrey Nuevo Leon Genealogy and History. And hey. it's uh we're already at I wanna say four hundred members. Four hundred and fifty nine mm -hmm. members as of today. Uh but uh, there I've been posting um links to Weird Cousins uh, for posts about my ancestors, some resources for Monterrey. Soon I will start posting the ebooks by Crispin Rendon for Monterrey. So if you have ancestors from Monterrey, I highly recommend you join that Facebook page. Uh, that, that is if you're on Facebook. 
So you can could I interject? Have... Can I interject here real, real quick? <clears throat> I want yes. I want to I want everyone to really really grasp and understand the 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 lending hand and the the sources that you're providing. I I I just recently uh, uh, posted in, in Sociedad de Genealogía de Nueva León in Facebook your information uh, and Crispin's information uh, to my to 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 the group of, of, of here of Monterey, here in Mexico, Monterey, and a good part of the people never even knew about that. They, they basically, some are lazy, some don't know what to do, and, and some, you know, they'd rather that you give it to them. But it, when, when I put that, when I posted that, they were like, wow, where did this come from? This is information that I never knew about. And this is, look, at that's my family, that's my, and, that was so good, and I'm, with your permission, I'm going to continue to do so uh, with other things that uh, that you guys are 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 putting up there for 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 us to see. Yeah, no, you're more than welcome to share my stuff and wherever you want. Um, just what I tell people: if you find something on Weird Cousins, just grab the link and paste it on Facebook, and it pulls all the information from the website. And you just type in like one little sentence while you're sharing it. That way people don't just overlook it. They see, okay, well, why does, uh, I'm sorry, why does Wellester think it's important? Just put a sentence, hey, guys, I'm sharing this because I think uh, will benefit you in whatever way. And I do that in all my groups. When people just post a link, I try and tell them, well, why do you think it's important to us? And, you know, it could be historical. It could be anything. But how does it apply to genealogy? You know, I had somebody post an awesome video about uh, how, the expansion of uh, Nueva España, you know, and it's more historical, but, and I asked him, hey, tell us why you're sharing it. I know it's important, you know? Yes. But why is it important? Tell the newbies, like, why is it important? And all he could have done or said was like, this is how La Nueva España expanded and it's important so you can know the time frames where the records were being created. Something like that applies to genealogy. Um, unfortunately, the person never responded. I had to delete it. Uh, now, if I could go and edit the, the link and put the comments, that would have been great. But Facebook doesn't let us do that as moderators. Uh, okay. And um, as you know, I have a lot of Facebook groups. Each one has its own little theme. Like if you go to our Monterrey uh, genealogy and history page, it has to be about Monterrey, genealogy or history. You right. cannot be posting about Cadereyta, you cannot be posting about Cerralbo, because eventually we're going to have, we have a group for Cerralbo, eventually we're going to create one for Cadereyta, that way people could niche down in the area that they're researching. Not just it, it, it's, it's, it focuses, it goes narrow and deep into that particular subject. Yes, because we have the Mexican genealogy Facebook group, then we have a Facebook page per state and then for Monterrey right now we only have uh, Facebook pages for Cerralbo and for Monterrey eventually I want to create one for all the major towns and that way people could niche down start with the Mexican genealogy group go to the, the uh, Nuevo Leon group and then niche down further down that's that's an excellent idea but um and basically, these pages belong to everybody. All we do as moderators is just make sure and keep them on point. Other than that, um, if you have a resource that it's valuable to anybody, go ahead and post it. And that's an invitation to everybody, as long as it's kept in point. Um, like history, I, history and genealogy go hand in hand. But I want to know about your ancestor and the role that he played in, in history. In that part of history, in that part of history, exactly. Yes. Just like that, that, that guy that you said, the butcher, I, I never knew that. And, and uh, I'm in, they made me an honorary uh, cronista historiador de Monterrey. And uh, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do a little research, hopefully a lot of research on, on the butcher and, and see if I can follow his steps when he, when he got here what made him be that way when he got here or maybe he was that way since he got here or, you know maybe in down south something happened to his family because of the indigenous people and he hated them or something or 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 who knows but but that's thank you for that because i'm, I'm gonna 
I'm going to see, see, and I'll pass you that, all that information. I'll pass it on to the group. And, uh, and um, so when Texas tried to get its independence, Mexico considered them as the colonos rebeldes because they were right. colonists. The, the, the so, bad child. So I guess that had to do something with him that he saw them as traitors because Mexico opened the doors to them and then probably considered them as traitors. And they were, well, he was, they say that he was ruthless whenever he fought in Texas against them, against the colonos rebeldes. Wow. But uh, that would be interesting. And congratulations. I didn't know you were a honorary cronista. Yeah, historiador y cronista of, of Monterrey. Wow, that's awesome. Thank you. Well, Willister, I guess that's going to be it for today. Do you have any parting words? Yes. Uh, the, the parting words that I have is, is honestly, when you have a, a, a plethora of information coming from the sources like you, Moises, and, and from Crispin, you know, take the 30 seconds to, to comment a little bit on, on, on uh, I mean, I'm getting chills right now talking about, about you and, and Crispin and all the work and the sites that you've done, because it's unbelievable that the, the help, the guidance, and uh, the, 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 the amount of work that you're taking away from everybody uh, to, to see these sources right now. It took me years and years and years to, to find, you know, one item. And uh, here, just like that, you could find something and uh, reach out, check out those, those sites in Facebook from, Mont from Monterey, from, uh, Co from uh, Coahuila and, and different states and all, all the, the information that he's allowing us to do this and it's for free. You know, maybe we should charge uh, one peso or $1 and then they'll put some value on it because sometimes, you know, what you receive for free, you don't put any value on it. And so what costs you, Yes, it, 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 it makes you think twice, but here we have a, a wealth of information between these guys, Crispin and, and Moy says, you know, let's, let's utilize them. Thank you and thank them for, for allowing us to, to share in this, this information that they're, they're giving us. So, you know, reach out, check out the sites, put down something that you know. You know, uh, what is that, that movie, remember, remember, Pay It Forward? And uh, from a movie to, to reality, Let's let's get on it. Let's do it. And you know what's amazing? I, I've helped people get started in their genealogy. Um, and let's say two, three years ago. And then they, it, how can I say it? It goes around because now they're helping me with my own research. It goes you around. Know, it tur comes turns around. out we have the same ancestors. I have a roadblock. Maybe they'll break it. You never know. And I, and I like I've always said, the more of us doing genealogy out there, the better for all of us. And the more we're sharing, uh, and, and like you said, sooner or later, we, we found that here, you, you found out between five and eight generations, we found between one and seven, but eight easily, that, that sooner or later, all of us are gonna, are, are gonna be distant cousins, all of us. And, 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 that's, and I think that's why the energy that's here, when you come, you're you're receiving all that energy of your of your past through everything that is here this is the cradle of, of all of us and uh you know you're my distant cousin uh sooner or later you know my my grandmother for example she's almaria de la garza and uh go those those de la garzas go all the way to blas you know and all the way to, to uh what's his name uh, marcos alonso de la garza marcos alonso de la garza exactly so Sooner or later, we're all connected. And, uh, and, and, and when I tell the people here from the Society of Genealogy, just, just last week, I told them, I, I see all you people as my brothers and sisters, um, as my family here in Monterey. And uh, they, they, they're, they're people, they're between their 40s and they're 70 years old. And uh, they're not used to, to to, to, to that kind of information, that kind of talk. And, and it took them a while, but then all of a sudden, all of them, they all started to post, yeah, primo, and, and, and I feel the same way. And, and you know, we are distant cousins and, and uh, orale and that kind of stuff, but we really are. I mean, th we're unique in all of Mexico. This doesn't happen anywhere else, but here in Coahuila, Tamaulipas and Nuevo Leon, we all share the same ancestors in a, in a nucleus. We do, and uh, I found out we're probably the 
area of Mexico that most or more descendants are doing genealogy research. I don't As know if it's- As a matter of fact, in Monterey, uh, the, the head of, of genealogy for the Mormons told us that when they went to a, conf a worldwide conference of genealogy, that there they all, they, they all said that Monterey was the most impacted group, our group, Genealogy Sociedad de Genealogia, and, 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 the, and the biggest group uh, in, in, one, in one location of the world. And, uh, and then we extended because of you and because of Crispin and because of, you know, Ogar and, and uh, Bejares and we, the extension that we all connect, we become a, an octopus and we have tentacles, not, ten, not, not we, but you, you have tentacles, we have tentacles, we all connect into a nucleus that's even bigger in the world. Yeah, we're just a little part. Um, but now that you bring a, brought up a conference, have you seen we're called, uh, We're Cousins is hosting its first annual virtual conference. Yes, I saw that. Um, okay. And as of today, we have 191 people that will be attending. That includes our speakers. Um, regular Have registration is going to end on August the 31st. So if anybody out there is interested in genealogy, learning about genealogy, about DNA, uh, make sure and sign up for the conference. Have you, have you extended the, the uh, invitation to the Mormon church? I have not. I've only been, uh, I've been basically keeping it in-house just on my mailing list and the Weird Cousin mailing list, the Mexican genealogy one, the Facebook groups that I manage. I haven't really promoted anywhere else outside our network. Um, hopefully next year, we'll have more people on board. This year, it's just me organizing everything. Oh uh, Yeah, I know um, that's a lot of work. You know, and uh, one of our speakers was in Greece, roots in South Texas, another oh, wow. speaker from uh, Mexico City, another speaker from Monterrey, so, and a bunch of other speakers from throughout the United States. You and, know Arturo, Arturo Cuellar, right? Yes, he's going to be one of our speakers. Okay. Uh, uh, no, that's, that's actually super. That's, but you uh, know, I, I didn't really invite him because he works for the Mormon church. It's more because I consider him a primo because he has roots in Nuevo León too. Yeah, he does. Um, <laughs> but you know, the family search decided to sponsor his uh, talk. So All at the right. beginning, I'll just say, hey, we have Arturo Cuellar and sponsored by family search. But if anybody's interested, just go to WACConference.com and sign up for the conference. It'll be September 23rd through the 26th. And we're going to record everything. On the 26th, if you cannot attend those days, no problem. On September the 26th through November the 30th, all the videos are going to be online on the website. You just log in with the username and password that you register with. And you're going to be able to view them at your leisure, whenever you want, however you want, from wherever you want, and however many times you want to see them. <laughs> That's excellent. Um, so I think it's going to be a very, very valuable resource for anybody. It will be. Yep. Well, thank you for inviting me. I really appreciate it. I love it. It, it, uh, it, it actually, you spark more interest and, and you, you rejuvenated uh, my, my uh, being aguitado. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Willister. And I guess I'll see you later. And that's it for our podcast. I hope that you enjoyed our conversation uh, between me and Willister. And also, I want to thank Las Vías del Norte once again for sponsoring this uh, show. And encourage you to go visit Las Vías del Norte at lasviasdelnorte.com. Remember, Las Vías del Norte provides the same benefits that a genealogical society does, but on a digital platform. They have newsletters. Um, monthly video presentations and a lot of other great stuff uh, please go ahead and visit them and thank you until the next time thank you for listening to the We Are Cousins podcast a podcast dedicated to South Texas and Northeastern Mexico genealogy